Yes, you do got it, Gary, at Binary Jazz. This is a podcast. We're here every, I was going to say week, but it's not so much every week because it's 2022, which is somehow a resurgence of 2020. It's even worse now. Uh, and uh, we're still here doing the thing. Uh, it's Binary Gary, who's Gary in real life, and it's Jazz Sequence, who's Chris in real life, and it's, I don't know what I'm doing here, uh, <laughs> Allison Plus, who's life? Allison in real life, and what is real life anyway? Um, and uh, we have this podcast where we talk about stuff, because uh, we need uh, an escape from uh, reality. I was talking to someone about um, boring years. I was like, remember boring years where there's like nothing happened, nothing of note happened. <laughs> what was your, we what were, was your what was the best age uh, for you as a boring year? Like, what was the what, what what age were you for the best boring year? That's what I, the question I'm trying to ask. It's like pre homework. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, All we're right. going way back. We're going I mean, like the problem. Nine. The problem with that. The problem yeah. with that is that it probably wasn't actually a boring year. It just felt boring to us in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, if uh, I think about like when I was nine, that would have been 1987. Mm. Right. I don't I mean, know. You know best. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> were yeah, you born right. 78? Yeah. Okay. Surely there was something bad happening in 1987, right? No, of course. <laughs> yeah, but of course. There is a recession. You know, internet to hear about it. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Unless you're just stupid and then you're an asshole. <laughs> I mean, I think I only at this point, I think I'd just like to be an asshole, given the I option. I think I only became of not aware of non-boring years. Uh it was whatever year Desert Storm was. Fuck. I think, I think yeah yeah probably when it's an 80s baby i claim innocence desert in this realm <laughs> storm desert storm was 90 to 91 august i thought it was, i thought it was early 90s yeah that was when that was when i became aware of non-boring years so for what it's worth i want to call out that um that was the first of two uh also the invasions Clinton, the U.S. Uh, spearheaded that were billed as the first televised war yeah, right right yeah. so yeah desert storm was the first televised war and then we had the war on terror which took place in iraq and afghanistan was also the first televised war apparently <laughs> so and it turns out that we the love the Russian invasion of ukraine was the first tiktok war and i think the only reason it was the first tiktok war which because, because TikTok television exists. yeah I and mean, that's yeah. it right so the first stream i don't know like i i will say that I'm calling that, bullshit is what i'm saying that that the two uh clinton scandals the i never inhaled uh that was a scandal oh, yeah. well it sort of was at the time it was yeah and but he didn't the, wear a mustard suit so and then the i did not have sex with that woman were both yeah. prior to desert storm and oh. those were non- I mean, that was, that feels boring at this point. A dude <laughs> yeah. that has sex, love, extramarital sex, a, a dude that is the president having extramarital sex and denying it and smoking pot and denying it, that feels boring. I don't want to be ageist, but how much sex do we think Biden is having? <laughs> I hope it's a non-zero amount. Yeah. For whose sake? For, For my our sake. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm sorry. I I'm personally sorry. do not want to be Joe Biden's age and be having a zero amount of sex. Yeah. I just look at. And I hope like, what, that that is true for him. 88, well. right? How old, how, seriously, how old is he, realistically? 87, 88. No. Yeah, I think that's right. No, he's not. No, I don't he's know. Not. Yeah, he's old. How old is Joe? He's, fuck, he's Biden. up there. 79. He's not even okay. 80 yet. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I agree with you. If I were 88 though, I think my annual number would probably be pretty damn close to zero. Nah. It's a lot of work. You think so? I I I, I would I would make it a, a goal. That would be my that would be my goal for the year. 
You heard a the non-zero we'll amount in some fifty years. Everything, everything in my being would be working towards that goal of yeah. not having a zero number at the end of the year. And maybe I'm just speaking from a place of exhaustion today. I had an exhaustion. It, it, it's so maybe I'm just yeah. like. And maybe oh. when you're 89, you would be yeah. in a similar place of exhaustion with just everything. But I feel like that's what I expect. I feel like, especially if we stay in this is, trajectory, although I don't expect 89 to, if it's to in have, this trajectory. You, you should take the time to to uh, have joy in your life, even when you are 89 years old. Yeah, I agree with but that. It also has to do with hormones, right? Because your testosterone yeah. lowers as you No, I know. Older, that's I why know. Like, men get weepier and like. I don't oh, know that I can get I, a lot I, I know, I know. <laughs> but I, but yes, will, uh, I Gary, will fight it with every fiber of my being. Gary, <laughs> it's really valid that you come from a place of exhaustion today. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I wrote but you know what? Let's yeah. acknowledge that some things are constant and that you're wearing a NASA t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And there are I, some I things actually... that are just dependable in this world and I need those things right now. Yeah. Um, I guess we should probably talk about the fact that five planets uh, were in alignment last yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. That was fucking crazy. I thought you were about Hold to on. drop some sort of like five planets are hurtling towards Earth. And, <laughs> and I was like, seems about right. <laughs> that fits. Yeah, that, that tracks. Uh, hold on, run us a new message. Let me finish this call. Um, yeah, I... I, I uh, we had some friends over on Saturday, uh, uh, which was, you know, supposed to be like a, a celebration day on Saturday. And uh, it was like a, it was more just like when they got here, like, shit, are you okay? You know, was kind of the, the general feeling. Uh, but it was good to be like with our people and, uh, you know, and whatever on Saturday. So that part was great. We had like seven kids running around the house and I think sometimes a sense of like, I mean, obviously a sense of community is, is usually really great, but like also a sense of some normalcy on like mm -hmm. your little microcosm level is like, I think that's healthy. It's just kind of like, okay, like regroup, like, I don't know. Also, one of the kids is like mm, a year older than Charlotte, maybe. And so they get along very well. And uh, I came outside to check on him because uh, we were in a neighborhood where they can just go outside and play in the yard and like great they're fine so i came outside to check on them and uh so my cousin going like we just saw a bunny i'm like no kidding like why would a bunny come around kids that are screaming and yelling like that's just <laughs> like bunny behavior they got those big ears they can hear stuff and um uh, i'm like okay uh, but then yesterday morning i looked out the window and lo and behold there's a nice wild bunny that has a den somewhere around here or whatever they have mm -hmm. um set up I mean, we've seen them like a lot on property, like far, but like right next to the house was kind of a novelty. And uh, the there's cats a whole bunch noticed. of uh, there's a whole bunch of bunnies by the campsite, by the campground that we camped at uh, a couple weeks ago when we were camping, um, and we saw them, and and they didn't seem too terribly spooked by. Um, so we we got there on Sunday, I think. Uh, and the first, and then we left on Thursday, uh, and on Wednesday, and I think that was like Memorial, I think the following Monday was Memorial Day. So like on Wednesday, the Boy Scout troop arrived, or at least we assume it was the I was Boy wondering Scout how troop. Memorial Day played into the rabbits. I was yeah. just like, they notoriously do not recognize Memorial Day. Yeah. <laughs> on Wednesday, the, the Boy Scout troop came, and it became infinitely more uh, noisy and boyish at the campground. Uh, and the bunnies did not seem to be overly perturbed by the rambunctious male teenagers. Yes, it comes with the territory. They're like different groups come through and they're just like look as long as some of these groups feed us we're good <laughs> it's worth putting up with the noise because there's so much leftover crap they leave behind <laughs> um one of the uh one of the kids is um over in the family's coming over is mc uh he's down syndrome and so he like like crowds are not his thing so he's very not interested in what we're doing like uh you can go upstairs 
um, the cats are up there. I said, okay with you? And he's like, oh yes. So he got like two hours with the cats, um, which was, you know, highlight of his day. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds like, yeah, that's like my kind of party is like arriving. Where are the animals? Can I just hang out with the animals? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. I, I brought a potato salad that's over in the corner. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I um, went to this meetup, which is very out of my wheelhouse, if we don't know that by now. A Vancouver Island meetup or when you were in... Uh the actual city of vancouver or elsewhere oh no like on, it, on vancouver island i went to a death doula meetup um because mm. I, have, I have questions and queries um but um in sitting in the circle they were like exchanging information everyone was just like oh are you on facebook are you on facebook and everyone was just like oh, obviously on facebook hmm. and i like we had gone around and i was like oh my day job is web developer and blah 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 and like but this is something i'm interested in and it got to me. I was like, oh, I'm not on Facebook. And everyone almost simultaneously was like, oh, so smart. Good for you. Like, that's great. And I was just I like, thought you'd <laughs> I was just great. like, what? I just was so fascinated by like, because people use it obviously for business, for keeping mm-hmm, in touch yeah. with people. I totally get all those things. Um, and there are parts of me that are like, should I be over there? And then there's parts of me that remember why I'm not over there. Mm-hmm. One I of just my thought weird... it was so funny that they can simultaneously be doing it, but also be like, good for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, of my, one of my weird podcasts that I listen to, um, it, the, the recent topic has been like the concept of creating and like mm-hmm. being a creator. And inherently everyone is a creator of some sort. Like it's just part of being a human. I don't know if I believe that part or not. I think I believe that part. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is um, like part of the conversation about like, what are the expectations? Like what, you know, mm-hmm. if you've decided that this is my role, I, in the world, I create things. Um, and so one of the things that this person observed is that everyone feels like, or has been told that you have to have like a presence on social and they're like, why? Like, yeah. if you're doing, if you're creating, like you get to make the rules and if yeah. the rules are like, social kind of sucks, I don't want to do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's brilliant. Uh, I don't know how you promote yourself. Otherwise figure yeah. it out. It's, you're making the rules. Yeah. You don't have a mailing I mean, that, list. You don't want that one. is sort of the problem. It's, it's the, like the idea that, that you use a you build a website and that's that's like oh if you if i build it they will come if i put it out there then somebody will surely find me and and that yeah. is uh, a fallacy that i know that you all know but a lot of people still don't know that um including uh the the kids uh, outdoor education instructor still doesn't know that he spent all this money to get a, a new website built and it's a cool website it's functional he can list his classes it takes payment all that sort of stuff mm. but he is so bad with internet things and organization and he doesn't really get the marketing thing. And so like, he didn't realize for six months that um, the payment system was set to like sandbox mode. (gasps) Oh no. So he, so when, when we had gone to like pay for a class that's coming up this weekend, actually um, it, it wasn't allowing him to take money. And like we had originally paid for the class the kids are in the kids were in last year before like he had done a website update and then he did this big overhaul um, right. and we had paid the first time with the first sort of update before the overhaul so we hadn't even gone through the system but like he had, was complaining about how small the classes were this year um and like i am assuming that it had been turned off turned in sandbox mode for the entire time uh yeah. and he just didn't realize because he doesn't know to test his shit and it, and like that's that's a failing on many parts but mostly it's a failing on the people who do know fucking better yeah um, like i feel real bad for him and the for having web developers oh. work for on his site and not not check that shit and not tell him and not it's definitely part of a uh launch failure <laughs> yeah <laughs> like checklist yeah so aaron has been uh like essentially QAing stuff for him um like voluntarily because uh you know she can and because he has gotten to the point now where he sort of trusts her he's encouraging her to um to get uh take a safety class so she can teach classes um nice. and 
yeah so she's been she's been um basically being his his little qa department which he very desperately needs yeah so. i was gonna say i was like sounds like there's a need there so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are like uh less than an hour away from a storm cool which means can you smell the it animals yeah yep the petrichor well i guess it's not petrichor yet is it does it have to start raining for that smell it doesn't have to start raining i don't think no, I think uh, it's just because it's in the air. That's yeah. that smell. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. And um, the there's a cardinal, and there's a butterfly over there. And actually, this cardinal's pissed at me because a squirrel jumped on the bird feeder and has knocked it sideways. So the cardinal tries to land on the bird feeder, but it can't because it's crooked. <laughs> so I'll fix it in a few minutes. I've, I've already fixed it twice today. I I need to find a squirrel-proof something. I don't know. Do you have Lee Valley? Get What's there? that? Do you have Lee Valley there? It's a store. I don't know. They have something called a Squirrel Buster bird feeder. I'm sure it's in other stores. Um, it's basically the the base of it. When a certain weight is placed, it goes down and shuts the holes yeah. to the the bird food. We have, ah, we have that's that. smart. So we I... moved this bird feeder because there was a stump that they were jumping from, which was pretty entertaining, to be fair. Yeah. But now, like, there's there's no way they can jump from that stump. It's like 10 feet. No, it's like eight feet away. They can jump. I think for sure. I mean, we it, were going I, through too much bird food. We found it really yeah, lovely. And then we were also like, how much money do we want to be spending on bird food? <laughs> like, yeah. We, um, this is only one of like when we seven. Started, bird uh, <laughs> when I started freelancing, freelance web design, I worked for a stupid company called Heritage Web Solutions, which turned out to be basically a, I don't know, money loan. The, the owners uh, took all the money and ran. It was awesome. Uh, but anyway, um, one of the first uh, projects that I had gotten, or one of the projects I got through that uh, first pro professional web design project was, um, I don't remember what it was called, but it was some squirrel deterrent system for yeah. bird feeders. And it was real dumb. The site was real dumb. <laughs> and I, if I'm remembering correctly, so, one, so the Heritage Web Solutions, the way that they did uh, selling a website is they sold it by the page because obviously all the pages are hand coded. Um, and there were all sorts of dumb upsells. And among the dumb upsells was a custom cursor. Mm. So I think I remember designing or finding like some clip art and making a very, very dumb squirrel cursor for the squirrel website i was on a uh, website the other day that had a custom cursor and i was like shocked and appalled i was like, like your calendar, you're like what year is it there's <laughs> all sorts of things like marquees were a feature and uh yeah the custom cursor was a thing this is the early aughts so i guess it's not that bad but it's still bad it, it was, feels it feels pretty, not great <laughs> it's real pretty geo city -y, a lot of the things yeah, yeah. I mean, that fits that time period though, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't viewed as an unprofessional image. You're like, I got a website. You're like, look, we've got a website. We're already one step ahead of the game. It's a smiley face cursor. Like <laughs> we really believe in making our customers happy. That's the message we're sending. Mm, I had to do more than one uh, custom cursor while I worked for Heritage. It was bad. It was all bad. Everything was bad. No, it hasn't changed. Everything's still terrible. Yep. Yeah. I did. I did learn uh, when I was doing. So this is pre me doing WordPress for like money, um, and uh, I did learn that the that the projects that would pay me the most were uh, the e commerce ones, obviously, because there's money involved. Uh, yeah, and and the clients are generally better, and the e commerce. <laughs> I mean, comparatively, uh, and the e-commerce platform that they used was Zencart. Mm, I remember Zencart. Yeah, mm. uh, that's awful. Uh, Zencart, uh, don't use it, but you can Google it uh, if you don't know listeners at home. Um, but it's it's pretty Is it awful. Still a thing? I think I don't know. It it exists in some archive, I'm sure. Um, no, well, I, I got pretty good you... about I got pretty good about uh, styling Zencart stuff to make it not look like Zencart. Um, you can download Zencart today if you want to time travel. Yeah, just just don't. 
Oh, look to version 1.5.7. Really? That feels yeah. like that feels like not a lot of progress. Yeah, I was like, like that the doesn't 20 feel years. Very... <sighs> I don't that feel was... like we should it Monday. was released <laughs> February of 2022. PHP 7.4 is recommended. You don't feel like we should Monday uh, as an on, it's just a, a permanent thing. Like, just Monday like, I don't like feel like a, another day of the weekend. Well, no, I just feel like this week, I don't feel like, I don't feel like Monday. <laughs> I feel like I got screwed over on Friday <laughs> mm. and I don't want a Monday. <laughs> yeah. Very Garfield today. So uh, I learned last week, about mid last week, that the project that I've been working on is going to be, uh, hmm, how do I very nicely say, re deprioritized? I guess deprioritized is the best way. Is yeah, the I, word de deprioritized <laughs> is probably the thing. Um, yeah, so the mm -hmm. thing that we've been building and trying to create a team around and, and for the last you know, six months or so uh, is being deprioritized and uh, all of us are going to be sort of reallocated or reassigned to other sort of projects. But all of this is real up in the air uh, and there is no definite timeline or anything. So mm -hmm. it's it's all very weird and oh, by the way, like everyone's leaving. <laughs> so there's a lot of unknowns and like yeah. topsy turviness. So my my end of last week was was very kind of like, oh, that's cool. Uh, and my, my lack of wanting to Monday has a lot to do with the feeling that nothing matters because I'm working on stuff that like mm. doesn't matter. It like, cause we're not prioritizing this stuff, but we're still doing it cause we haven't figured out something better to do yet, uh, yeah. with our time. So that's cool. That's a weird limbo. Yeah. You should totally, uh, come work with me. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'll put a good word in for you. Yeah, I was, I was, I, that's why at the end of last week, I was looking at, I was looking at stuff. Uh, I wasn't, I, not like sure how serious, but like, I don't know where I am anymore. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And, and like, it's, it's a bummer. Um, mm. Even if it's, even if it's like, you know, the thing that we're, the, that we're building isn't like the most exciting thing. It was a thing, you know, it was a project that like I was, the lead of and i won't be the lead of something new and that's you know the whole thing is kind of just and it's a temporary thing probably um i feel like we've been saying that for years we're like yeah. it's all just i'm in a transition space <laughs> yeah 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 right well i mean you know the the economy turned to shit like in the last couple months and and that affected everything including including us and it you know mm. yeah oh i really identify with all of that and i work for myself so that doesn't make any sense and we're buying a house probably this week so you know there's that on top of everything <sighs> well that old thing that old thing that process oh yeah. great that's not stressful <laughs> yeah that actually uh we put an offer on that place uh like the sunday that we left uh to go camping so uh -huh. um the acceptance and all all that stuff uh all went through while we were camping and so we were getting i was getting phone calls and we were having conversations with various insurance and financiers and everything yeah. uh like that was exciting and, and also very stressful mm -hmm. well the house across the street is for sale from us come on down everybody <laughs> <laughs> What's it listed oh, for? Also, they don't post photos of the inside, so it's a grab bag. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, we, we, didn't saw, even bother? we saw, we saw, there was one of those uh, houses that was listed uh, in somewhere uh, in Salt Lake that we that came up in our radar, and it literally said in the description, "Photographs will not be, or photographs of the inside won't be shown until you make an offer." <laughs> Yeah, That's so you so have nuts. to you have to make an offer on the house before they'll even show you what the inside looks like. Sight wow. unseen. 
these people they they actually did write i should clarify they they there's renters in the house and they're not taking pictures of the result of that but they didn't even put a floor plan i thought it was very like Mm -hmm. i was like the market is good but it's not that good like you need a few snapshots of something like yeah not just your kid on the trampoline outside like what's the list price on it uh 5.99 okay what's the bedroom bathrooms you know um i think it's four bedrooms one bathroom Oh, that's one, one and a half, maybe. Tricky. Uh, one and a half is better. <laughs> is the backyard fenced in? It is. Two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> they have an above ground pool. I don't know if that's included or not. Oh my God. How can it not be included? I guess they I mean, take it with them. I guess they get maybe, it with I don't them. Know. I just, I don't, I never know with people around here. Sometimes stuff is included and sometimes it's not. So yeah. Chris, there are so many, um, well, this is a bad example, but I'm going to use it anyway, because it's what I do. Yeah. You found the bird seed on the ground. Go for it, dude. Live it up. Um, there are so many um, trailers around here. Like you drive past trailer parks and many of them have added on like a deck mm-hmm. and with a cutout where it, a above ground pool used to be but there's like places where like clearly there was an above ground pool and it's no longer there so mm. i would assume like somebody Those moved are expensive. Or sold even it. above ground ones like yeah a lot of water yeah oh not yeah not just that but like okay well now you have to treat your pool so you don't get mosquitoes because you've created like a yeah. place for them to breed like yes. yeah chlorine does a pretty good job of killing them except for the ones it doesn't kill. And now they like are impervious to chlorine and now you have more the next season. So it's like, whatever. Um, two of- Can you hear the bugs yelling at me? Uh-huh. They just got two, a lot louder. Two of the uh, neighbors, uh, one across the street, directly across the street and one directly next door to my in-laws um, uh, are putting in pools. Oh, and wow. the one, the, yeah, it's weird that it's at the same time. And the ones that are next door, they've gotten pretty well into it. They've dug out the trench and everything, and they cut down a whole bunch of trees sort of at the same time. Um, but they said that both of them said that the reason why it took the reason why they haven't started until like the last couple of weeks is because of zoning. They had to get the zoning approved and it took a really long time. And the ones next door at least said that their project isn't likely to be done until September. So basically, <laughs> They will have they will have all of this stuff being built on this pool, and by the time the pool is ready to use, it will be just about the season that it will not be possible to use the pool anymore. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> oh, and the ones across the street, it, it sounds like they're they're even more moving even slower with the construction because they're doing some other stuff. Uh, so um, when we they're also parents- unlikely to be able to to use it until much much later, till next year. When we, when we see my parents, they have a pool in their neighborhood, which is great because they don't have to maintain it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, great. You know, we're going to go to the pool. It's going to be like mayhem, kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it wasn't. It was like two or three other people. We were there for, you know, an hour or two. I'm, I'm like, just Dang. baffled by the idea of outdoor pools in Utah. Um, yeah, that's a lo- it's a location. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's true. For sure. Like there's three months that, out of yeah. the year. There's three months out of the year where like, yes, pool would be excellent outdoor pool like right on but the rest of the year the... it's going to be too freaking cold and you wouldn't want an outdoor pool anyway and so then it's just sitting there doing what like you're running like do you drain it every year or do you put a cover on it and like you gotta cover it because the problem yeah. with draining it is is now you don't have the walls reinforced so you you risk damaging the walls and eventually they fall in you gotta leave the water in there but i don't know maybe freezing it damages them too i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. Look at us. we're all pool experts now <laughs> I looked at there's a pool in I don't know like five blocks from me like a private club pool and I'm mm. like oh I wonder what it costs to join um, like maybe that might be a nice like way to exercise in the morning instead of you know walking for hours um, I said this after getting a blister on my foot um, and uh, I looked into it and it's like 300 bucks for a family I'm like oh, okay for the year and I'm like okay that's kind of cool oh, and they're open the year. From... I was like per month I was yeah. like no for the year lot. and they're open here from um, Memorial Day to Labor Day. And I'm like, but we we have like that's those bookends work like that's not that's not enough for this area. That's really odd. I know. And I'm like, what what, what happens the rest of the year? Like it's actually probably usable, you know, 
well later here. I mean, I would think probably in the early stick October. to that or if those are guidelines and then they kind of wait wibble wobble them based on. I mean, looking at the website, they have like a Google calendar you can look at. And it seemed like pretty specific that they are sticking to them. So, and also it didn't open to like noon till 6 p.m. or something so like that. I'm like, I want to go early in the morning. Yeah. Like noon? Like what? So you're paying for access. Like it just seemed bad. No, there's got to be a better situation somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just keep walking. So we didn't have uh, a topic this week, and that's cool. But we do uh, mm. often will reserve the end of this show for uh, questions. That because we didn't have in. a topic, we didn't explain how the show works. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, at the end of the show, we have questions. Like and this. you can you can submit questions uh, to us on Twitter. We'll probably see it. Or uh, binaryjazz.us slash contact. Please if you send don't want to, yeah, if you don't want to use Twitter, right? Like we will take questions however you find to provide yes. them to us. We're reachable. Right. Find me in the grocery store. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't find me in the grocery store. <laughs> I'll be grumpy be so because I'm not in the grocery store. But if you come up to me and you're like, hey, I listen to your podcast and I ask you questions, I would be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I would be so weirdly ecstatic <laughs> and weirded out at the same time. I would be scared. <laughs> I would be frightened. Um I do oh, have one. Side, really. I do cool. have one Russian spam that I think that I should read. Um, oh, great! Just because it's funny. Is it um, though? <laughs> it is. No, it is. Uh, it says uh, this is from Pamela Epimb, all one word. Um, with with a doggle dot info email address. Doggle. Doggle. Yes, not dongle. Doggle. Uh, and they say what words, or rather the artificial intelligence uh, going by Pamela Epimb uh, says, what words, super, a remarkable phrase, for a long time I hear was not, Viva Robet Casino, Beep Casino, uh, some strange characters I don't know, Click Click Click, Crypto Casino. I'm actually more convinced uh, from that email, by that email than any other you've read that the sender is AI. <laughs> I just really like the beep in there. Beep. I, I know. <laughs> it's very Roadrunner-ish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we do have an Allison question uh, from a little while ago. Uh, look at her. Look at her looking out for us. <laughs> yeah. Look at her looking out for us. Past Allison. Uh, it is. What was the ro most romantic thing ever done for you? And I do not have a prepared answer for this. Um, <laughs> I don't either. I mean, I just heard it, so I guess I couldn't be weird if I, was I did. Say, if you have a prepared answer, we've there's we've had a breach in security. <laughs> oh no, Gary logged into the website. <laughs> <laughs> done done for me is hard. Um, it would be um early on when Ron and I were first married. Um, she made cookies for me after a stressful, I just stressful, like run at work. Like I was going to work a lot of hours. I was working retail. So I was working like overtime and all that kind of stuff. And retail is just miserable to start with. And, uh, we weren't seeing a lot of each other cause she was working like opposite hours. And so it was just like, eh. And, uh, I was, I was just, I was just in a bad way for a few days. I came home and she made cookies and it was just this like magical, like cookies are kind of the key to my heart. So mm. <laughs> Yeah, can relate. Uh, Noted. <laughs> Noted for when you're having a bad day. <laughs> it uh, it just it just hit. It was, the timing was just so perfect, and it was just mm -hmm. like a just sat on the couch, and I don't even think we turned the TV on. I think we just sat there and ate cookies like <laughs> next to each other. Nice. And I'm sure we ate all of them in that one sitting. And now, what kind of cookie do you remember? Yep, chocolate chip. Okay. I remember vividly. I I can talk about them. I can actually taste them. Talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> and in true classic fashion, we've circled back to food <laughs> yeah. i don't know if you can hear but as i said that i was like salivating a little trying to keep this <laughs> i uh I, yeah food food is definitely the way to my heart as well um i think i think okay so i think i think the most romantic thing that was ever done for me i, I talked last time about uh it was some other romantic memory or a thing that like mm -hmm. triggered uh the album. yeah yeah so that same that same thing that same period um 
Aaron and I had just barely started dating. Like we were like, I mean, not barely. I mean, it was, it, we had, we had just sort of made a decision uh, to each other that this was going to be uh, important and exclusive and like serious. Like we were com sort of committing ourselves to it. Um, we had Christian nationalist nationalists among us. They had exchanged promise rings. <laughs> no, we did not exchange <laughs> promise rings. They aren't among us. They aren't um, among us at this point. <laughs> God, I hope not. Uh, we if you both, are listening, we were both coming yourself. out of we were both coming out of relationships that we had gone yeah. to college with. Mm -hmm. So I had right. came in uh, to college with a relationship, and we both were attending that college. She had come in with her relationship from high school, and they were they were also uh, um, still involved. And both of those exploded in catastrophic fashion, basically simultaneously. Um, and uh you know obviously my ex lived in the bay area uh or had came from the bay area um her ex was going to a commune somewhere in northern california and she essentially asked or conned i'm not sure which exactly her way into hitching a ride with him oh, right to go on this eight hour trip like along the coast up California to visit me to have him drop her off on the way so that he like on his way to the to the commune um so the romantic thing is that she endured an eight-hour car ride with her ex to yeah. see me that's, that's fucking dedication. commitment <laughs> that's like I am the prize commitment <laughs> yeah yeah I I I yeah pretty that was, wild that, that is pretty wild Allison, do you have something? I did not prepare an answer for this question. <laughs> um, I feel like, let's see, there's a bunch of different stuff that comes to mind, but like before we even technically started dating, Robin would make me mix CDs, which mm. for children listening, <laughs> um, and to listen to on the flight home, basically like at Christmas or summer. Mm -hmm. And I would never get, like listen to them and then like really thoughtful like notes about the songs and like what the deal was. Um, so that sticks in my mind because that's just something that like, it's a surprise that I can tolerate because it's not a surprise surprise, but yet there's mm -hmm. an, an unknown factor. Mm -hmm. um, and I love anything that's like created with, with intention for one mm -hmm. specific situation or person um so those sorts of things are always just really just really loving because it's just like even though even if someone insists that that's not made with love it's i'm just like oh clearly it was mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah miss mixed cds are my love language yeah sure. like i was just like and it, and it was music that i was not familiar with like it wasn't right. like songs that i know you'll love it was like right yeah it's new jazz. stuff that i think that you'll love that like my understanding of you is communicated through the songs that i have chosen for you yeah, and it was like all this jazz and stuff that I'd never, like, not on my radar at all, not in yeah. my... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.